Polymer, which is uh, basically it's a web components framework maintained by Google. And it strives to make web components easier to integrate for all projects. So it basically gives you a framework to make web components. So uh, what are web components? Web components are uh, somewhat analogous to modules in Node. And basically what they are is um, this thing, that they want to standardize it. They don't want to make it like something that is hacked into the browser. They really want it to be a standard that all browsers strive to support. And they basically make it so you can modularize HTML tags. So the main problem right now with the web that a lot of people talked about is basically you go to any site, you right click source, and what do you get? A ton of divs of classes, IDs, craziness, a ton of spans, and you don't really know what's going on. You, with HTML, you'll, all you're going to see is divs, spans, classes, and IDs, and you don't really know what they're referring to, what, which div has what functionality, why. You'd have to go look down their code. It's not very good unless it's very well commented or something else. Secondly, it's very hard to share resources. Right? right now, uh, I'm sure a lot of us have used uh, specific directives or certain modules for Angular, and you have to go find them. You have to make sure it integrates with your version of Angular and maybe doesn't overwrite some other thing you have in your project. And then you have to learn how to integrate it, and then it, it might use some weird hacks to get around certain things. What if you could just use element tags? What if you could just download element tags and require them and use them? And uh, lastly, a lot of problems keep, uh, keep being resolved, right? But what if you could also share them just like NPM modules? So now when you solve a problem, you don't have to, you don't have to keep resolving these problems. And you can, you can just add and remove uh, HTML tags from your, from your index.html or whatever you're using to change your code. Now, there are some cons right now. First, uh, there's awkward browser support because there's they're trying to get standardized, but there's a lot, of, a lot of rebuttal, I guess. Like A lot of people don't really think they're the future, even though Google does, and so do a couple other companies. Uh, second, they're, they're pretty new, so it's hard to find a lot of information on them. And so if you have any problems like making web components you on Stack Overflow, there's like, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred. <laughs> That's it. And then uh, it's changing very quickly. Like Polymer just released the 1.0 recently. And before that, uh, it was a massive change. Like people have to rewrite everything if they use Polymer. So uh, definitely wouldn't recommend using it for production or anything like that. <coughs> so specifically, how does Polymer helps you, help you make web components? So it gives you a framework and, uh, and just makes it super easy to just get started. So I'm going to have a code demo here so we can get started. So give me one second. <coughs> so basically, so here's this uh, basic server that I have up. Let me make sure I have the right one up. OK. All right, so I'm going to start this basic server. It just has this index.html. And uh, let's do a hello world to get started, right? So basically, I already Bower installed Polymer, as you can see here. And web components JS. So these are two requirements of Polymer. And now I'm going to go over here to my notes and just I made this hello world.html here. It's empty right now. And this is what my page looks like. There you go. And then I'm just going to import this hello world. It's not going to do anything yet because it's because I haven't. Uh, I haven't added anything here. So here's how you use Polymer. First, you have to import Polymer into the HTML that you, you want to make a module, basically, right? So now this HTML has access to, to the Polymer.html. And next, you just type DOM module ID equals hello world. And then inside here, you can specify the style for this, right? So just <laughs> open up a style tag, and let's do h1 equals, or rather, I guess body h1. Oh, wait, forget, you can't do that. So anyways, yeah. color blue. And then just like directives, you can also set your template, right? So just do template. And let's say you want an H1 that says, hello world. OK, perfect. So now you have, this is, this is how you just specify the style and what you want it to contain, your module. And then next, you have to also have a script tag at the end. 
And here you just have to have, you just have to specify polymer and pass it an object and just say is. And here's basically where you decide what, what you're gonna what's gonna be the tag for your HTML. So here let's just say hello world. And there we go. So now I'm gonna go over here and in my body I'm gonna write hello world. And it should work. So there we go. We have hello world. <coughs> Perfect. Now obviously that's not the most impressive thing, right? <laughs> you would really make this module. But there's some cool things you can do, right? So in this Polymer object, you can then add properties, right? And now this is basically where you decide your model for this object, right? So if I want to do properties, and I can say name equals my name, and then here I can say my template, I want to make, let's say, an H2 with the name. Perfect. Oh, I forget this is an object. So then if I go over to index.html and just add name equals Alex. Oh, sorry, I messed up here. This is supposed to be string. So there we go. And now here I added my name. And there we go. Appears on the screen. Perfect. So I guess from there you can see this can get way more complicated as you add stuff to your properties and make it all modular. So the really cool part about Polymer, though, that I found is just there's already a ton of resources. And you can basically, it's super easy to install new ones. So for example, here's a really cool one I found while researching this. I know a lot of people were having trouble integrating some maps and learning the Google Maps API. So here's an example of how easy this can be with Polymer. So I'm going to go to the Polymer website. Really nice. Go to Element Catalog. And here we have a couple pre-made ones. Let's go to the Google ones. And then here you see Google Maps, somewhere around here. Perfect. So we have the Google Maps. We can read all this if we want. But what's really interesting is you just have to click over here, this Bower command. And we're just going to install it. So let me shut off my server real quick. Install it. Perfect. Start my server again. And now it's just on. All right. So now, so now I want to have this map appear on my screen. What do I do? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to import it. So now it's in my Bower folder. I have the Google Maps, and I have this other stuff that it depends on. So I have this Google Map. I just brought it into my, into my index.html. And here I'm just going to write Google Map. Perfect. And I want a, if you want a specific latitude and longitude, all you have to do is just add it. So you can literally just put latitude, longitude. And if you go back here. And refresh. You have a Google Map. Super easy. You don't have to do any JavaScript, anything. All you have to do is pass it on as a directive. And even cooler, uh, the Google Maps is obviously way more complex than my Hello World. So it has uh, a really cool dependency called Google Marker. So if you look inside it, you can literally set a, a marker just by putting another uh, web component inside it. So now inside Google Map, I put another web component that references in Google Maps. It's in its properties file. And now I can just refresh. And there we have a marker. I wonder what, where that is. Where could that be? And we're going to, oh, look, full stack. Perfect. And th that's how easy it was to put a new marker. All I did was put title full stack, and it made my marker where I wanted it to be. And there you go. So here's some of the code I was using. It's visible. And then this is an example of the Google Maps code that's more complex. So you see they, inside their template, they have another, another uh, polymer. Just how mine was only an H1 of Hello World. But here you can see they put another template with its own properties inside. So you can see how complex these web components can get. And then this is, these are some of the properties in the Google Maps one. And that's how they, they do what they do. And then, yeah, to wrap up, uh, Polymer's are currently at the forefront of web components. I think they're actually like the only framework or one of the only frameworks that do this. Uh, it already has a solid amount of built-in, as, as you saw here. Like, there's all these Google ones. So anything Google, anything feeds, and they have a lot of other ones. And uh, most importantly, increases the versatility of HTML and makes it clear to read your code. Now, when somebody goes to my site, if they page source, they can see very clearly this is a Google map, and this is what it's doing. And that's it.